Splash, Mrs. Panda of the Giant Pandas was presented with a bundle of joy early this morning. It's a baby boy. Be back in a flash with more trash. A baby at the pandas. Let's go see it. A baby at the pandas. Let's go see it. Mama! Mama! The pandas have a baby boy! The pandas have a baby boy! So what? What then? A baby panda? My, my! Let's name him Elmer. Donald. Jack. Jim. Joe. Bill. Butch. Uh, how about uh, Elmer? Elmer. I like Elmer. 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 Call him Wilbur. Yes, sir. Wilbur's the name. Quiet. 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 I'm going to call him Andy. Andy Panda. Andy Panda. That's a good name. Yeah, that's pretty good. Andy Panda. Yes, that sounds great. That's a swell oh, name. Oh, I still insist that Wilbur is a pretty name. I still insist that Wilbur is a pretty name. Are you feeling? Am I late? It's not me, Scott. Let me go. Let me in. Flash, Andy Panda is now six months old and has grown to be quite a problem child. I still think Andy ought to be called Wilbur. Andy, come with Papa and we go for a nice long walk in the woods. Why? So you can get acquainted with Mother Nature. Ah. Oh. Where does Mother Nature will? She lives in this great big forest. In a house? No, no, not in a house. In a tree? No, no, not in a tree. Oh, Playboy, huh? Jump 
Get nosy, Bob. Hello, Mayor. Yes, this is the Mayor. You gotta do something about these rats. Yeah, you gotta do something about these rats. Well, call the health department. No, I'm the Mayor, not a rat catcher. Rats are everywhere. Don't bother me with details. I'm a busy man. I'm a taxpayer and I want action. Mayor, get rid of these rats. Rats? Who's a rat? Well, catch them yourself. Yeah. No way. You better get me out of here. My house is full of rats. Call the fire department. 
Who the hell to fuck me? Call anybody but stop calling me. <laughs> rats, rats, the town's full of rats. So what can I do about it? Listen, mister, what you need is a Pied Piper. Yeah, that's it. A Pied Piper. Woo, 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 woo. Who said that? I did. Relax, Professor. I'm the Pied Piper. Can you get rid of rats? For a small financial reimbursement, I'll run every rat out of this town. That's a deal, my friend. That's a deal. <laughs> I'm dancing! Solid Jackson, that guy's from Basin Street. You know, I think most of us are interested in how things began. 
And I believe that's why so many people ask me how Woody Woodpecker became a movie star. Before Woody was born, our big star was Andy Panda. Andy Panda was a cute little fellow. He was always ready to do a good deed. At this time, Woody was completely unknown, and we decided to give him a small part in one of Andy Panda's pictures. This is humiliating. I'll have you know I'm a great actor. To be or not to be, that is the question. Well, that takes care of him. We soon realized that we had a real character at our pencil tips. So I went to work with some of the artists in our studio to write a cartoon story in which Woody Woodpecker could be the star. They came up with all sorts of ideas. One fellow thought Woody should be the dashing adventurous type. Another artist suggested starring him in a western. Like all woodpeckers, I thought Woody should be a little wacky, lovable but fresh, in and out of trouble and causing most of it himself. Homer Brightman came up with an idea for a jungle story. And for one sequence, he suggested that Woody be lost in a swamp. He climbs up on a rock, thinking he is safe, when the rock turns out to be a big, hungry alligator. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to start my career on an alligator's empty stomach. Well, the rest of us agreed with Woody on that. And while we were talking, I noticed Alex Lovey was folding a piece of sketching paper into the shape of an airplane. Hey, Walter. How about sending Woody on a cross-country flight? What? Without a motor? That's for the birds. Wait a minute. I am a bird. Then the most obvious idea hit me, and I said, uh, remember how I first discovered Woody when he was drilling holes in my roof? Mm -hmm. Let's do a story on that, Homer. That's a great idea, Walter. Only this time, it'll be Andy Panda's roof. You've got it. After a few days, the boys put together this storyboard for Woody's first picture. The title of his first starring cartoon was Knock Knock. And you're going to have a chance to see it a little later in our show. What's the big idea, Shorty? Well, I guess it's time for a Woody Woodpecker cartoon. Say I'm busy. Guess who? Now, 
wise guy. I'm gonna blow you full of holes, just like you put on my roof. going to pull that old gag on me, are you, son? Do you know what I did to the last guy that tried that? Why, I tore him limb from limb! <sighs> Thank you. 
It's time for another cartoon.
I was about to give Woody Woodpecker a ride down this pole. <laughs> now I know it isn't everyone that has a woodpecker in the family. So I imagine you'd all like to know how life began for our backwoods Barrymore. Oh, boy, not that again. What I'm about to tell you is actually a true story. At the time it happened, I had a cottage in Sherwood Forest, which is just a short distance from Hollywood. One morning about five, I heard a frantic knocking. I couldn't imagine who'd be calling on us at that hour. Half asleep, I opened the door and looked around. There was nobody there. I thought I'd been hearing things, so I went back to bed. A few minutes later, the knocking started again. This time, I knew I wasn't dreaming. I got up and went to the front door again. But I still couldn't see anyone. Now I was completely awake and realized the noise was coming from the roof. And what do you think it was? Yes, it was a big red-headed woodpecker banging at the roof as though his life depended on it. I shouted at him and he flew away. As he left, he gave a crazy sort of a laugh. He not only awakened my wife and me with his early morning serenade, but he was ruining my roof. And do you know why he was doing it? He was drilling hundreds of holes as a storage place for his winter supply of hazelnuts. Here are a few I found. All right, boss. Put them back. That's my old age pension. Hasn't he got a nerve? Now. To get back to my story, I had about as much as I could stand. So I said to my wife, Gracie, this woodpecker has got to go. Sherwood Forest isn't big enough for both of us. I started out the door with my shotgun with the idea of giving this woodpecker a real scare. When Gracie said, don't you know it's against the law to shoot woodpeckers? And anyway, I think he's real cute. Now there's a very intelligent woman. Pipe down, Woody. And furthermore, Gracie said, he's dynamic. He has color. He has personality. And you know, you've been talking about a new character for your cartoons. How about a woodpecker? This sounded like a wonderful idea. So I immediately drew a few sketches of woodpeckers. I'd like to show you what my first impressions were. As you can see, it was quite a problem deciding just how Woody should look. I showed the drawings to some of the artists at my studio. They all felt that a wacky woodpecker would make a good character. So we made hundreds of drawings of woodpeckers. They were all sizes and shapes. This one had a long needle nose. One artist thought that he should have a broken bill. These woodpeckers were too fat. This one wasn't bad, but I felt we could improve him. Now tell him how I became a big Hollywood star, boss. Later, Woody, later. Right now, let's get on with the show. It's time for a Woody Woodpecker cartoon. the home of Wally Walrus, owner and manager of a quiet and respectable rooming house. As we look in on this reputable old fuddy-duddy, we find him enjoying his weekly bath, while upstairs, a slap-happy tenant is enjoying a game of 
well, of all things, <laughs> indoor golf. should overlook this little incident. But I'm not going to! <laughs> now, one more peep out of you and... Here, read the rules. Thank you. 
Let's stop the frivolity and analyze the situation. In that bowl, you got a fish, right? Right. And in my stomach, I got an appetite, right? Right. Need I pursue my point any further? Let's make a merger. Your fish, my appetite, right? Right. So long, chum. It's been fun knowing you.
cooking fish. You're cooking fish.
Boss, you're on. Let's have a little action. All right, Woody. Let's see. Uh, what shall I do? I have an idea. I'll show our television friends how we draw our characters here at the studio. It's really simpler than you might think. But first, let me show you some pictures by a few young artists who probably draw just about the way you do. Many of Woody's young friends have drawn pictures of him and sent them to me. I think they're wonderful. But most of these young artists are trying too hard. They erase a lot, and sometimes they rub holes right through the paper. The results aren't always good. Oh, boss, they're ruining me. It's murder. Now let me show you a few simple tricks. Here's a circle, and an oval, and a pear shape. and a sort of a hot dog shape. With these simple shapes and a few connecting lines, 
you can draw almost any character you can think of. To show you how it works, let's start with Woody. First, you draw a circle. Then put two ovals inside it. Two lines make the bill. Then we put in the eyes, the eyebrows, and the mouth. The next thing to do is to add the top knot. Now, a few simple outlines make the body. And the arms, the hands, the legs. Then we add the feet. A few details give Woody his personality. To give you an idea how important these simple shapes are in making animated cartoons, let's take a quick look around our studio. Here's a director creating a character for one of our cartoons. Notice how he uses the tricks I showed you? Here's an animator using the same shapes to rough out his drawings. Do you know that the next cartoon in our show has over 5,000 drawings? Now, perhaps, you'd like to bring Andy Panda to life. Again, we start with a circle and an oval, then two more ovals for the eyes, two more for the ears, one for the nose, and a line for the mouth. Finishing touches are easy to add. That's a good idea, Woody. There we have Andy Panda in person. So no matter what you want to draw, remember, you can do it better and quicker if you use the little tricks I've shown you. You know the secrets about the circle, the oval, the pear shape. Just put them together with a few connecting lines and you can create your own cartoon kingdom. Thank you. 
help you? Yeah. How about a menu? I beg your pardon. A menu. Menu. M-E-N-N-Y-O-U-U. -U. Menu. Perhaps you mean our price list, hmm? Yeah. What's your feeling prices? Could be. We all have our off days. Hmm. Uh, cut off the smart crack and bring me some food. Uh, bring me some French fried soup and a big T-bone steak smothered in pork chop. And uh, let's see what else I have. <laughs> Women. Motor cars. Women. Yachts. Women. Mansions. Women. Mm. Hey, Jughead! Bring me my food! Oh, yes, yes, food. Oh, yes, food certainly picks you right up. Blackout Borscht.
$100,000. Mansions. Yachts. Women.
Hi there. I'm working on a new character. It's top secret. And I can't show it to you just yet. But I am going to show you how that lovable bird brain, Woody Woodpecker, was created. Okay, boss. Quit padding your part and tell him about little old lovable me. Now look here, Woody. I don't know where you are. But if you can't keep a civil tongue in your bill, we'll just forget the whole thing. Oh, Mr. Lance, please, sir, you wouldn't. After all, my public has a right to know more about me. All right, Woody, all right. But where are you? Right under your big, uh, I mean, right under your nose, sir. <laughs> No, he's not in here. Or here either. No. I wonder where he is. I'm right here, boss. In the pencil on your drawing board. <laughs> All right, my fine feathered friend. Let's see what you look like. Let's see, we put the eyes in here. And the top knot. Uh-huh. You were in my pencil. You sure had me fooled for a while. Let's see now. A little line here. And a bulge here and a broken tail. And, of course, a big mouth. Hey, you made me look as if I swallowed a balloon. I'm not that fat. Sure, I want to be a big TV star, but not that big. In that case, let's see what we can do for you, Woody. I'll have you reduced in no time. Oh, great. This is just great. Now I ain't got no body. Oh, don't be so impatient. I'll have you back in shape in a jiffy. There. How do you like that? Muscle Beach, here I come. Now you've got me looking more like a toothpick than a woodpecker. <laughs> well, you're sure hard to please. But let's try it again. I'll bet you wouldn't be satisfied if I made you look like Superman. Just what do you think you should look like? Let me have that pencil and I'll show you. Okay, wise guy. Here. How about your tail feathers? <laughs> wow, what a ham. But that's Woody, and that's how he was created. He gets under your skin at times, but he wouldn't be Woody if he didn't. That's all for now. I'll see you later in the show. Well, the best would be a pretty good time for a Woody Woodpecker cartoon. Guess who?
Doors, troubadours, swing doors, and cusper doors. Stand back, please, and let them out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the main attraction for this afternoon on this side, Woody Woodpecker. Weight five pounds. Two pounds over. On this side, Oxnard the Terrible. Weight 1,100 pounds. 11 pounds under. It's a lot of bull, or is it?
Uh, look how big everything is. Look out! Here comes a giant bird of some kind. Hey, uh, here comes a big dragon. <laughs> Monster coming at us. It's a giant lady. We'll have to hide. Well, I declare, a little baby. I'm going to take you home and give you a nice warm bath. Hey, I'm not a baby. I'm a man. I can't hear you. I'm a little deaf. Now, here's some nice warm water. We pour it in this cup. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> Don't you like it? <laughs> I always did want a little baby just like you. I know you and I are going to be so happy. 
<laughs> well, aren't you a cute little thing? Now then, how's that? <laughs> now I'll tuck you in your little bed. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Hey, Tom! Where are you? <laughs> That to me. to me. People often ask me where we get ideas for cartoons. My answer is, the whole world is full of ideas. And here are some of our cartoons that started out with a simple idea. As you know, Woody Woodpecker was born when he came tap-tapping on the roof of my cottage in Sherwood Forest. And knock, knock, Woody's very first picture was built around his early morning tapping on the roof. But ideas can come anytime, anywhere. 
For example, there was a story in the newspaper about woodpeckers ruining telephone poles. So we produced a cartoon in which Woody almost wrecked the phone company. And the title of this picture is To Catch a Woodpecker. Naturally, fairy tales are a great source of ideas for us. On one, we started with the story of Three Wishes and developed it into a film in which an Irish leprechaun in the form of a green woodpecker comes to the United States where he meets Woody and offers our red-headed friend Three Wishes. Smoked ham was the result of a ham that was burned when one of our artists had a barbecue. Fairweather Fiends is a twist on the phrase about Fairweather Friends. Destination Meatball was suggested by Destination Moon. Wacky by Baby started out as Rockabye Baby. Then I remember when Davy Crockett was a national hero. One of our animators wore a Crockett hat to work. And before you could say, Remember the Alamo, the story of Davy Crewcut was born. Many times ideas start with nothing at all. One fellow comes in and says, what's funny? And the story will develop from there. When an idea is suggested, the story men decide whether it's good and if it lends itself to a lot of funny gags. The idea they're working on now started in just about that way. Paul said, what's new? Dalton said, I saw a circus going up out in the valley this morning. Homer piped up, hey, it might be fun to do a circus show. And Paul said, it might be at that. We haven't done one. There's lots of color and action, and there ought to be plenty of gags. Then they started sparking with ideas. Pretty soon they're working the story out with sketches and words, and even a little acting. Now I'll explain what they're doing. There's a big circus in town. Woody wants to get in, but he hasn't any money. He pretends to be a magician. That way he'll manage to get into the circus, and the fun really starts. So where do ideas come from? They're all around us. All we have to do is look for them and be ready to recognize them. Always keep your eyes and ears open and remember, that anything might be an idea for a cartoon. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show.
and gasoline, eh? Mm-mm. Oh, no? Well, let me smell your breath. Would you put some water in my automobile? And eat, but you never pay a dollar. Now get out for good. And by Yam Ben Yemeni, don't come back anymore. You, you moocher. 
Oh, a moocher, am I? Well, mooch applies to you. He's got a nerve, throwing a guy out on an empty stomach. I'll find another boarding house. Uh-oh. Lonesome bachelor wishes to meet refined ladies. Object, not try it, money. Can offer fine home and lots of good wholesome food. Phone, Wally Walrus, asthma, 4343. What a cool incident. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This is Bali Valrus. Well, this is turning time. I saw your ad in the paper. Ah, that's good. Uh, young lady, are you refined? Am I refined? I'm 110 octane. Now don't go away. I'll be right over. Goodbye. <laughs> What a beautiful name. And by golly, she's coming to see me too. Sweet and dainty, like a fairy, and her voice is so divine. Like a feather in the weather, she's my darling Clementine. <laughs> My name is Valrus, but <laughs> you, you can just call me Plain Valley, yeah, sure. Okay, you cute little Wally Wally Wally. By golly. She is plenty wonderful. <laughs> ah, there you are, my little love bird. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are too. No, I'm not. I said you are. No. Yes, you are. No. Yes, you are. No, I'm you not. Are. You are. No. Yes, you are. Ah. She loves me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
folks, better hold on to your seats, because you're going to hear the doggonest explosion you ever heard. Over the rainbow live four good fairies, wisdom, beauty, wealth, and destiny. They were all very beautiful 20 years ago. what they wanted. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, girls, I have a magic wish for the little princess. I wish that she... A very is... good idea. As a good fairy of wisdom, my wish will bring her knowledge. And... <laughs> and with my magic power, I wish to give her everlasting beauty. <laughs> and I, I shall endow her with riches and great wealth. But girls, you're forgetting that without me, you can do nothing. I am destiny. Oh, you and your old destiny. Always bragging about yourself. Yes, always bragging about what you are. Oh, it's the mailman, the mailman. Beauty, and one for wealth, and one for wisdom, and one for... Well, of all things. Well, what do you know? I'm invited to the celebration. And me, too. And also I. You see? That's how important you are. Yes, they didn't even invite you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they wouldn't invite me. Well, I'll go anyway. I'll... I'll crash the gate.
adventures and waste. I wish thee great beauty. I wish thee wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> I'm only a day old, but am I smart? Invite me, destiny. Well, my wish is that on her 15th birthday, your little princess will prick her finger on a spindle and fall asleep for a hundred years. Yeah! <laughs> and so that the cursed wish could never come true, the king had all the spinning wheels and spindles destroyed. Fifteen years later, the little princess had become a beautiful maiden, and one day, while snooping through the castle tower, Come in. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm spinning, dearie. Would you like to try it? No. Nope. I do want to. Oh, it won't hurt you. Much. Come on and try it. Uh-uh. How do you wanna? Look, it says in the book, you gotta prick your finger and go to sleep. But I'm not sleepy. And besides, I do wanna. Look, I've been waiting for 15 years. And now you say, I do wanna. Oh, ask you, is that fair? <laughs> oh, well, if you're gonna feel that way about it, Ouch! <laughs> Come back in a hundred years, folks, and see me wake up. <laughs> Princess slept for almost a hundred years. One day the good fairies were cleaning house and they found the lost letter under the rug. We found it under the rug. So you were invited after all. You've done a terrible wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm a bad girl. What'll I do? Only a lover's kiss will awaken the princess. I wish, uh, I wish that the nearest prince will come to her rescue. <laughs> What's going on here? Whoa, Sea Biscuit! Whoa! Gosh, what's got into me? <laughs> I feel foolish. <laughs> it must be love. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are you the sleeping beauty? The sleeping beauty? Are you the sleeping be- Are you her? <laughs> no, I'm not the sleeping beauty. Look. Gosh. <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> She's gorgeous. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> She's pretty good looking, <laughs> ain't it? W what do I do now? Kiss her, you dope. <laughs> Who, me? Oh. <laughs> I'm too bashful. <laughs> I ain't never kissed a girl, a girl, a girl. I ain't never indulged in osculation. Look, it says in the book you gotta kiss her and you gotta kiss her. Hello. 
sure they lived happily ever, 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 until they got married. <laughs> Did you ever wonder why we generally use animals and birds in our cartoons? In the first place, there's such a variety of them that they offer us many different characters, and we find them interesting. They're usually cute little fellows. For example? All right, Woody. You can be the example. Most of us like fantasy, and some of our favorite stories come from books like Mother Goose, fairy tales, Alice in Wonderland, and all the wonderful, well-known children's stories. Now, you know how people talk, but how does a rabbit talk, or a penguin, or a buzzard, or a walrus? When we see such creatures talking and acting like people, it seems very funny. Then, too, animal and bird characters, like Woody Woodpecker and Andy Panda, can be dressed simply. And the styles never change. We get fun out of drawing them, and I hope you get a lot of fun out of watching them. I hope you enjoy the cartoon characters talking to each other and the rest of our show today. Listen, buddy, if you want to see this show, you got to wait, see? Okay, okay. Well, what a dead elephant.
My friend, when I get through with you, any similarity between you and a woodpecker will be purely coincidental. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah